Can you tell me about a time in your life when you felt really fucked up? I had lost all my family and friends and ended, ended up trauma bonding with someone who was in a similar situation. Um, so we became a very dysfunctional couple. Um, and yeah, it started small but ended up like being uh, very abusive and I think, I, yeah, I felt very fucked up and I had no idea how to get out of the situation and in a way I was you know, addicted to control, trying to control the situation and I was afraid that people would think of me as weak if they knew that I was in that situation because I had the belief that someone who was a strong, independent person wouldn't have gotten themselves into that situation. So when I finally told someone about it, that wasn't the case. I didn't, I didn't ever meet someone that I've interacted with and told my story to that felt that way um, or expressed to me that they felt that way. So. That was the best thing I could do, was to let someone know that I was struggling, and the best thing they could do was not judging, not judge me, and uh, just ask what I needed in the way of support. And you know, slowly but surely, I dug myself out of that situation with you know, and then I fell back into it, and then I dug myself out again, and. Um, now, yeah, there's still little things about my life that are, is, that are fucked up, but it's pretty awesome now. I learned a lot from that situation. Awesome. About being fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> um, so time in my life when I was really fucked up was probably uh, the end of 2018, beginning of 2019, and I went through probably the worst breakup I've ever gone through. And traditionally, breakups do hit me very hard. Um, but this was like life altering. It completely changed the way I saw myself. I couldn't even like look at myself in the mirror. And for probably like four or five months, I just was so fucked up. Like I couldn't go anywhere. I couldn't do anything. Like my anxiety was just so high that I couldn't leave the house. And it wasn't even that there was anything outside that was scary. It was just I had gotten myself into like such a bad place mentally that nothing felt okay anymore. Um, I leaned on my brother a lot for support in that um, and a couple of really good friends of mine um, that thankfully didn't cast any judgment, you know, and, and didn't, I guess, look at the situation as only one person did something shitty, you know, and it was, you know, but um, it really took like realizing that I had to get out of the headspace because I was like not going anywhere. I wasn't doing anything with my life. Um, and that was really scary. So um, I finally, you know, I called the doctor. Um, she got me on some medication that helped um, and got me in touch with a, I don't know if it's a psychiatrist, a Kyle, a good psychologist. Um, and he diagnosed me with borderline personality disorder, uh, which is, you know, I don't know. It's cool. I mean, I'm, I've, I've been learning how to deal with it, I guess, which is really just being prepared for how you're going to react to things, I guess, and that you may have stronger reactions than other people to certain things. So that was kind of interesting to know um, that after living my life the entire way that I have, um, that there is kind of a way to deal with it better. So I think it was taking the steps towards um, accountability, getting in touch with the doctor, relying on friends and family. Um, and really just pushing myself to to make those steps because if I didn't like that that was gonna be it you know mm -hmm. and right now I'm in a really good place with really amazing people um, in pretty well all aspects of my life so sick tell me about a time in your life uh, when you felt really fucked up Of course.
I think I was pretty fucked up during high school. I hated it. I was sad and so, so, so just emotional and hormonal and I just like, I felt like heavy every day, I felt like I couldn't, you know, the high school thing, I don't know, I just felt like so emotional every day, I could barely wake up, like had like somebody sitting on my chest every day. Kind of and, um, it didn't get better until I left high school. Like I like as soon as I was out of there, I felt like a huge relief. But like just I just felt like it was sad. I was just so sad all the time, you know. And I like I really couldn't put my finger on it why now and probably couldn't then. I just felt like everything was too much, you know. Um, yeah. And I, I think I, I really thought that it was, I blamed it on this small town that I lived in that was the cause of all my worries. And, you know, it obviously wasn't. <laughs> when I left, I, all my troubles followed me, this age-old tale, and I, I moved away, and I was sad there too, and the coincidence could not be probably me making the town sad, uh, <laughs> and I, uh, yeah, I realized at some point driving across the country that I was missing, you know, I, I didn't hate my town, I just hated my life, and uh, I was missing community, which, you know, I had to go find, it exists probably in many towns, it also existed in my hometown, so I came back here and I found that. Um, and like, I, I would truly, truly not be where I am today without the community that I have now. Even this place, like, you know, I felt like it fell in my lap. It felt like, you know, I was sitting in a chair getting my hair cut, and the owner asked if I wanted to learn how to cut hair, and I said yes. And, like, that's one of those decisions that you'll forever think about. Like, I'm so thankful. I, you know, it took me a really long time to leave that shit job that I hated. But I came around to being in here full time and like slowly, slowly, you know, got better. It's not like it wasn't hard, but. Can you tell me about a time in your life when you felt fucked up? Uh, I feel like a lot of people uh, that I've told this to have felt the same way, but around the pandemic, I was sitting in a beautiful cocktail of hours of time in isolation to myself and uh, only thoughts to think. And I just got looking through, I think I was sitting on my floor looking through pictures of myself like from the past couple of years and just realizing how much time and effort I spent putting into this character of myself that I didn't feel was who I was and, and I didn't feel like it was worth putting that amount of energy and that amount of, of really suffering into becoming something that you're not. I think it was about that point that I started looking at gender identity um, and yeah a lot of questions came up for me like am I faking it is it something that I'm doing to please other people all over again is it real or not but the process of unfucking myself was <laughs> seeing more and listening more to me and not 
to the things that I pretended I was, or the performance and perfection and grappling for worth and things that don't give you worth, things that just are material. Um, meditation helped me, needing a community and a space that you just get to show up and just be a raw, unedited version of you has definitely helped me and it's been a long journey and sometimes it fucking sucks <laughs> but at the end of the day when you go home and you know you've just had this great experience because you feel seen as an individual rather than just like some character of yourself it feels worth it to me hundred percent it's worth all of the toil that goes into disassembling some built up fake that's where I am now disassembling